All right, guys. Um, I want to introduce a, an idea that you can take forward with you in your chess, which is to ask yourself on every move, what is the most critical move that you can play? Um, now, what do we mean by critical? Okay, so it's it's kind of the opposite of of quiet. Um, so. Critical means, are you putting pressure on your opponent or are you defending in the, the best way? Okay, so for example, to be able to get checkmate, to checkmate your opponent on your turn is critical because it wins the game. Uh, avoiding checkmate by your opponent is also critical because it saves the game. If you can get a, a checkmate by force as well, that's, that's also completely critical. Okay, but in general, uh, we, we can work down the kind of hierarchy from there with things like capturing material can be critical if it doesn't lose. Okay, because you can, you know, being up in material doesn't always mean that you, that you win the game. So let's just go through again. I'm going to pick a game against the bot. We'll pick, um, we'll pick Sven. I'm going to go random, uh, no take backs. And I've got the white pieces. So start of the game, what is critical? Well, we want to develop. That's important. Uh, there's no checkmate threats or any real threats right now. Uh, so in the start of the game, you want to think about being able to release your bishops at some point, which means that you want to move one of these pawns. I mean, at the start of the game, there are only, what, 20 possible moves. You can move either pawn one or two. So that's 16, and you can move your knights out, so that's four more. So there's 20 possible moves by white at the start of the game. But generally, I'm going to play e4, and the reason is because I'm now controlling important squares in my opponent's half of the board, and also I'm releasing my queen and my bishop can now come out into the game. Okay, so my opponent's playing the French. So here, I'm going to play d4 because that also then gives me more control over more squares on the board. Okay, let's see what Sven does. Okay, so this is normal French stuff. So now we have some tension between these two pawns. And um, I have to ask myself, is this a threat? Allowing black to capture there? Well, it could be, because this pawn is currently undefended. So. There's a few options. You can do the exchange variation, right? Where you swap off these pawns in the middle of the board and resolve the, uh, the tension that way. Another option is the advanced variation, moving your pawn to e5, which resolves this issue, which is quite critical, um, and also covers these two squares. So it stops this knight coming out, for example. So let's play that move for now means the queen can't come here, the knight can't come here, the bishop can't come here, etc. Okay, and now c4. So very normal move in the French. Um, if I capture there, that's going to allow black to develop his dark square bishop for free and get a lead in development. So I'm just going to play the very kind of normal looking c3 so that if c takes d4, I can take back. All right. And now the queen's come out to b6. So does this come with a threat? Do we have to respond to anything? Well, the queen's looking at this pawn, which is currently defended by my bishop. So my bishop really needs to stay where it is. Um, I could capture on c5, but then the queen's going to capture. And what I've done there is I've traded one of my central pawns, which are important, for a wing pawn, the c pawn. So I don't really want to do that. I can't really attack the queen in any way right now. I could develop my knight to f3, which is defensive. It's adding a second defender to this pawn. So if my knight's there, we've got two defenders. Um, and it's also moving one of the minor pieces on my king side, getting ready to castle. So that's definitely an idea. I've got queen to a4 check, but that would probably just prompt bishop to d7, attacking my queen. And then my queen will simply have to move. So that would lose tempo and would lose development advantage. So I think knight to f3 looks sensible here. Okay, and now with knight to c6, black now has one, two, three pieces all looking at this pawn. 
Okay, and it's defended one, two, three times. So I'm not concerned right now about my d4 pawn. I can't defend it again by moving my bishop because that hangs this pawn here. So I'm thinking now that a simple developing move might make sense, but let's have a look to see if there's anything more potentially aggressive. Now, one idea is to move my knight to g5, maybe queen out here, looking at a, a, a winning opportunity there. However, if I move my knight here, I could find myself losing this pawn um, with pawn takes. But then if pawn takes, I can move my queen to here and threaten uh, an attack. But then it's not too hard to defend against. So right now, what are we thinking? I could develop my other knight, which doesn't have that many options right now. It could come to b3. That's a possibility. Um, what else? Queen b3 is, is an idea, facing off the queens. And then if queen captures, I capture inwards with my a pawn. That might not be a bad thing either. Also, just bishop to e2 would be an idea. Bishop to d3 is not so good because it blocks the queen's defense of this pawn. And that means that this pawn is only defended twice, right? If, if my bishop's here, it's defended only by this pawn and this knight, but it's still got three attackers, so that's not a good idea. So I think my candidate moves are bishop to e2, which isn't super threatening, or queen to b3 is kind of critical because it means the queens are facing off. So in this instance, I'm going to play that move. All right. So we have the advance of c5 to c4. Now, this generally isn't a great move for black. Um, but we still have this tension between the queens. And also now my queen is under attack. So now I have to do something about that move. I can't advance to here. I can't advance to here. I could go there. I can't go there. Or we could trade queens. Um, so I think at this point I'm just going to... Should I just drop my queen back? That might be an idea. So I'm looking at possibilities. I'm looking at then knight g5 with the idea of capturing on there. That, that might be a plan. So let's drop the queen back to c2 because I do have an attacking possibility now. Okay. Ooh. Notice now that since this pawn has advanced, black only has two attackers on the d4 pawn. Right, I currently have two defenders on the d4 pawn. That's okay. So one option here is simply to grab the knight off h6. We'll probably get pawn recaptures, and then that really breaks the pawn structure on the king side of the board for black. Also, we have quite a significant uh, deadlock pawn chain, or two pawn chains in the middle of the board, which makes life harder for, um, for bishops than it does for knights. So we've done that exchange now. Okay. So I think now casting kingside is not really an attractive option for white, sorry, for black. Uh, where are we at? My knight still needs to come into the game, but this isn't a great square. It doesn't have many prospects from there, apart from maybe b3 at some point. I could play b4. Because if black's going to castle and get his king safe, it's more than likely going to be queen side. So starting some counterplay on the queen side might not be a bad idea. Then I can still castle my own king. Uh, could face this, which is a concern. Um, also, my queen is the only defender of this b2 pawn. So I'm thinking maybe b3 or b4 now might be an idea. Now, if I play b4... My opponent has three attackers, but b4 is defended by a pawn, so he'd lose a piece if he was to capture. I also have a3, maybe preparing b4, or I have b3. And if b3, queen's not going to take, we could have pawn takes, and then I can recapture with that. So I'm thinking b3 looks interesting now. Creating this uh, counterplay on the queen side of the board. Now I've got two options. I've got queen takes, pawn, or a takes. 
My queen is under attack, that's very, very important. Uh, also, this pawn's under attack, and I'm currently a pawn down. So I really do feel like I need to recapture that pawn. And I'm thinking queen takes looks interesting, because then again, we have this tension between the queens. If queen captures, I've got A captures, freeing up space for my rook. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and capture the queen, and I'm going to recapture. Okay, simply there's a there was a queen on offer. Didn't even think twice about that move. Okay, so now what have we got? We've got quite a nice pawn structure on the queen side of the board. My king side is still pretty solid. My opponent has a bad light squared bishop, which is very common in the French. Also, the dark squared bishop doesn't have that many squares to go at. Now I'd like to castle, but if I was to move my bishop out now, this pawn would be undefended because it is being attacked by this rook. So one option could be to push g3. Um, I think my bishop is probably going to end up coming out this way rather than to here because there he's looking at the light square pawn chain again. Um, also ideas of just pushing c4. If pawn takes, pawn takes, and I've eradicated his d-pawn. That looks pretty good. Um, that looks quite promising, actually. I'm going to push c4. Uh, it undefends this pawn, but the pawn is still defended once by that knight, so let's go for that move. And the king has moved. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. So it's not totally surprising, because... Uh, Obviously, castling kingside is no longer possible because the rook's moved. Um, but also, castling to here didn't look fantastic. So do I want to capture here? That does remove this pawn, allowing my bishop to come out and point towards the king. That's no bad thing. I can also now move my knight. My knight could come into here, but again, that doesn't look too promising. This pawn is undefended, so bishop d3 is a possibility, but again, that undefends g2. I could also defend g2 by moving my knight to here. My knight there cannot be dislodged by a pawn, because there is no g-pawn. But then from here, my knight doesn't have many forward prospects either. So, what's critical? I think clearing this space looks kind of interesting. So if I take and pawn takes, that leaves black with an isolated pawn uh, in the middle of the board and less material around the king. So it also does isolate my B pawn though. So I would be happier if black took my pawn and then I recapture because that keeps my pawns linked together. So right now, do I have options with moving this knight around anywhere too? I'd like to solidify this area of the board. But I'm thinking maybe even castling kingside now may not be so important. So I'm kind of just inclined to play g3 now to eradicate the threat from this rook and to release my bishop, maybe to come here and look at this pawn. So let's play g3. And the king has moved again. So the first thing I notice is maybe if I could get my rook here to c1, I can capture here and that would open up the line towards the king pinning the knight. Then we've got maybe pawn takes. I can't really push this pawn to b4 because um, my opponent can just capture it straight off. Um, I can now play bishop d3. That's kind of critical because it's attacking an undefended piece. It's also developing my bishop. So I'm attacking that. My bishop's now developed. Okay, so my opponent has now been forced to make a move he maybe didn't want to make. Um, moving the rook here. Now, the first thing I notice is it's blocking the, defi the, the deficiencies, the bishop's defense of that pawn there. I can't really attack that pawn immediately. So, what do we have? If I take here and pawn takes, 
that's not bad but I do leave myself an isolated pawn I'd like to be able to push this guy but it's uh, actually attacked twice there by bishop and knight so that's not viable at this point I'd love to get my knight into this square for example that looks very good um, so maybe I could think about playing h4 and then reroute my knight around of course it wouldn't be defended on that square Hmm. Or I could castle and bring my rook into the game. I'm expecting a charge by the h-pawns up there. So I'm thinking h4 now looks useful because it stops the advance of these guys. Okay, so now my opponent has played knight to b4. Why did my opponent play that move? Well, there's a couple of issues here. One is he's attacking my bishop. Now, we've already seen that the, this, I mean, this it's slightly disrupted now, this, this uh, deadlock in the middle of the board. Um, the bishop is undefended, so this is critical. So a couple of options, right? I can't move here because knight could capture on c2 and that comes with a fork on my king and my rook. Don't want that. Okay, I could move my king to d2, for example. That defends the bishop and defends c2. So that might be an idea. Can't put my bishop there, 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 or there. So bishop e2, but that's no good because knight comes into c2 with the fork on the king. So I'm now going to move my king to d2 and allow this exchange. Okay, he's not gone for that exchange. The king has now run away into the corner. Now, that really does block in this rook here. So I'm thinking about control of the board. Um, I'm thinking about attacking opportunities. So right now, knight to c3 looks good. My knight could then come in and advance towards the enemy king. Generally a good idea. Uh, it also connects my rooks and completes development in a way. Um, so that's definitely an idea. This knight right now is looking a little bit awkward. So I could think about maneuvering my knight round here, maybe try and trade off black's knight. Still love to get my rook into the, my knight into there. So this is possible, f3, then knight to there, and then knight to here, with a second attacker on that pawn, which my opponent then couldn't defend. But it's a slow sequence that. And then if I push this pawn, of course, this pawn here is undefended. So I think I kind of want to keep things how they are there. So maybe knight c3 now. Knight c3 looks like a good all-purpose move, and I don't see any immediate threats, so let's go with that. Okay, he's pushed h5. No huge issue there. It does undefend this square, which means I do now have the option to put my knight into here. And then I've got two attackers on that pawn. And I don't see how my opponent can defend that pawn. So knight into here. He could push this pawn here, in which case I capture and attack the rook. Hmm. Another idea he's got is to capture my bishop, king recaptures, and then I've only got the one attacker there. So that would probably prompt that. I could play my knight here first. I kind of like that knight. Hmm. Rook here is an idea. Pinning this pawn. One attacker on the knight, but it is defended by this bishop here. So let's just revisit knight to g5. How critical is it? So I think what's going to happen is, oh hang on, my opponent's also got h6 there. Just kicks the knight and forces it to retreat. And I can't capture this pawn because it's defended by the rook. So I don't think this, uh, this is that great. So how about capturing the pawn on here? Could have knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes. 
in some way it's going to open up the area around my opponent's king. Also to some degree opening it up around my own king. I've also got c5 stopping off this bishop. But the bishop can't go there or there anyway. I could simply bring my rook across. I could try and lift this rook. I could play my knight to here. That is kind of critical. It's creating a threat. Uh, if knight takes, we might have bishop takes, and then suddenly that bishop becomes strong. So maybe I don't want to do that. So what to play? What to play now? Knight here and here. Try and get rid of this knight. And do I have to worry about this pawn advancing? Not too much. So this we don't think works because of h6. Then the knight just has to retreat. Knight here, here. Could be interesting. But then again, I don't really want to open up that bishop. I've got rook a4. And then maybe knight round here. Okay, I'm going to play rook a4. All right, so he's attacking my rook. Mm -hmm. I could bring my knight here, but then we've got a6. Doesn't look great. Um, I could capture the knight, but then bishop takes rook, and I'm down the exchange. That's not great, and also pins my knight. Um, hmm. So maybe I should drop my knight back. But then that puts it in line with this bishop. So then the knight could simply take my bishop, I recapture... Bishop takes rook, that's no good. Can't bring my rook back to here. Could advance my rook, prompting some action on my opponent's side. I don't think b6 would be a great move there. I could also, hmm, thinking about pushing this pawn again, but that doesn't defend the, the rook, that's my immediate issue. Hmm. I think it just dropped back all the way back here. Okay, now his bishop's retreated. Leaving the king not many squares. Okay. So that, should we think about bringing the knight around now? Try and trade off this decent knight. Or do I simply push c5? Yeah, I kind of like this move. It really constrains that dark squared bishop. Yeah, kind of prevents this. Okay, so now he's moving the pawns around his king. Quite happy about that. Stopping my knight from coming in there. But my knight can now come in here. That would be great. I don't really want to trade my knight for that bishop, but it would force the rook to move. And it is creating some threats. I also want to engage my H rook as well. So maybe C1, potentially supporting this pawn in some future advance, or also knight round. Now this bishop's been kind of neutralized, it can't, it can't come to that square anyway. So I'm thinking this knight maneuver might be good now. Still got this with two attackers on there. But again, we think we'll just push the pawn and we're okay. Um, so let's bring the knight round. Okay. This is interesting because he can't put his bishop there or there or there now. So I don't really see the point of that move. I'm going to carry on with my plan with the knight. Okay, so he's taken out the bishop. Right, I'm going to recapture. That's okay. So now I'm not attacking this pawn anymore. And the king has moved yet again. Now here we have a tactic. The, the king's moved here, right? My rook is looking at that square. The square is blocked. The attack is blocked only by this pawn. So now I do have the idea of knight to b5, where it's attacked only by the pawn, but this pawn is pinned by the rook. So knight to b5 there would force the king back. 
And then my knight is simply uh, hanging because the pawn can capture it. So that's not the best idea. How about just pushing b4, b5 now? That looks a bit more dangerous. I'm going to do that. Now if I push b5, again this pawn can't capture. Okay, he's thrown his rook out. Rook can't go there because of the knight or there. I could bring my knight back around and hit the rook. Force the rook back. Can't go there because of this knight. Can't go there because of this pawn. And can't capture that pawn either. But does that improve my knight? Does it improve my position overall? Or how about this? Pawn can't take. And I'm threatening that. I think that's more critical. It's more pressuring. Hmm. Interesting times. Okay, so the bishop is looking at this pawn, which is defended by the knight. This pawn is pinned, so can't take any part. I could push b6, which is very critical. It comes with check, will force the king back. And with the pawn there, the king then can't come forward. Makes the dark squared bishop worse, but kind of improves matters for the light squared bishop. So if I push that, do I have to worry about this? Not right now, I can just capture it. The rooks are no longer connected, so this rook is defended now only by the king. If I capture here and pawn captures, that really opens things up. Really opens things up around the king. I take pawn takes, rook b1, and the king is stuck behind his own pawn. Hmm. That looks pretty good, actually. Takes, takes. So these pawns are off the board. Then my knight can come in here with another attacker on that pawn. Let's do that. Whoa. Rook c8. What's he thinking of? Well, I have a check, but it's no good because bishop takes. So we can discount that. I've got rook b1 threatening rook takes b7. That's very evil. If the pawn advances, I can capture on, uh, on passant. Rook b1. Or a takes b7 check with a discovered check by the rook. Threatening this rook. King's very likely to recapture. So if the king's on there, I've then got rook b1. And the king can go to one of these two squares. Or rook b1 first, threatening that. I'm going to play rook b1. Alright, that's uh, to be expected. Okay, so now I have knight b4, putting a second attacker on there. Pawn can't advance because rook takes. Knight b4 now. Still not afraid of this rook, that's fine. This is pressing, it's threatening rook takes a6. Um, my opponent does have one check, but I can simply move my king to one side. Let's play it. And that simply drops a rook if I want to trade my knight for this rook. My opponent has the bishop pair, which could be an advantage in the ending, but then having two rooks is also an advantage in the ending. So if I take bishop takes, I can maneuver my knight round here, defended by this pawn. I could also think about just doubling up my rooks against that pawn. I'm going to take the rook with check, free material. Okay, now, I've got rook b6, comes with two threats. Capturing the bishop or capturing the pawn. 
So if I play my rook here, he's almost got to play that. And then if I push my pawn, the bishop's under attack, the bishop might drop back to here. Huh. I've also got knight here, check. The pawn's pinned. So the bishop captures, rook captures, and the pawn still can't recapture. And it breaks the bishop pair, which is good. Okay, so now I can capture this. The pawn can't take. And now also, rook b5 puts two attackers on this, and there's nothing else that can defend it. So take that with check. Rook has to retreat. Okay, now I've got rook b1 check. This is looking pretty good now. My king's side of the board is pretty safe, and I've opened up my opponent on this side. Um, one option is rook a8, check. King has to move to one of these. Then I can play rook 1 to a7, winning a pawn. King would have to come here. I win a pawn, threaten another pawn. That looks good. Okay, check. And check again. King must come here. Okay, now the king only has one safe square. So do I bring my king around? There is a risk of rook comes here attacking this pawn. So the king can't go there, 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 there. So if I was to play, for example, rook c8, that forces the king here, right? Because this pawn's guarding those two squares. So I play rook c8, it forces the king here. So it's a forcing move, good ideas. Then rook here would force the king on, I think we might have a forced mate here. Okay, so follow this through with me, right? And if you can get a forced mate, that's critical. Okay. Rook c8. King can't go to any of these squares. Okay. So the king has to come here. So rook c8. King b5. Rook b7. King can't come here. Yep. Yeah, I think we've got a forced mate there. The king's going to have to come onto here. So that, yeah. So it's not an immediate mate, um, but let's say I simply drop my rook back now. I'm threatening mate in one. This is also just defending this backwards pawn. Okay, it's not mate in one right now. Um, I could still win this pawn, but that's not the point. You know, just snatching the odd pawn is not the idea of the game. So, got rook here, drop my rook back and mate him. Also means his bishop's still pinned, so the bishop can't move. Neither really can the rook. Okay, so rook here. That's just a random push of a pawn. Rook here. Ooh! <laughs> right, fortunately I can grab that. And now we have checkmate. No, we don't. Now we do. All right, there we go. So, yeah, introduction to critical moves. <clears throat> so we're trying to avoid slow moves, but critical works both ways. You know, it's attacking and defending as well. So anything that you can do to um, ensure your pieces are protected is, and, and coordinated is generally good. But um, really what... We should all be looking out for moves that apply pressure to our opponent. They might not be immediately, explicitly evil, um, but in general we're trying to make life more difficult for our opponent, we want to make it more difficult for them to attack, we want to make it hard for them to defend, and we want to keep them on their heels constantly, having to respond to our moves and unable to exert their own um, 
exact their own plans on us. So, yeah, this is something I'm going to be thinking about and working on myself um, going forward. So I hope that's been useful for you, that little exercise beating Sven with the concept of critical moves in chess. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.